Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. All right, guys. I spilt some water on my shirt. It's fine. It'll dry. Mm, the last rule. Well, let's go. Preemptive like. I hope everyone's doing well. Continuing the Basil series on History March, the original link to the... Ooh, they hit a million subscribers. Nice. Um, The original link to the video from History March. M March. Ah! All right, I'm not restarting. First video of the day. Rusty. I can't speak. History March. Original link to the video. Top of the description. My name's Connor if you're new. Let's go. All right, let's learn. Of the Krum dynasty. Uh, Basil retakes Macedonia. The tide turns. Battle of Scope J. Uh, 1004. Let's go. Part 4. I'd recommend watching the previous parts from History March, but that's up to you. That was a rough start, but we're, we're there. We made it. By late 997, Bulgarian Emperor Roman, the last ruler of the Krum dynasty, died in Byzantine captivity. He spent his final years governing a vast estate that was generously provided to him by his captor, Basil II. Since his capture, Samuel became de facto ruler, successfully waging war against the Byzantine Empire. But after suffering a crippling defeat in the Battle of Sperkaios at the hands of Basil II's star good. general, Nikiforos Oranus, Samuel was forced to seek terms. But the year 997 would be a fleeting moment of peace on the western Byzantine frontier, as the two Balkan empires geared up to continue the war. Neither would rest until one of them was gone for good. With the death of Emperor Roman, a conclusion to the long Byzantine-Bulgarian war finally seemed to be on the horizon. Byzantine Emperor Basil II now hoped he would have an easier job in carving up Bulgarian lands. However, not long after Roman's passing, Samuel adopted the title of Tsar. This was enough oh, Hold on. Oh, oh, let's read this first. Claiming the title of Tsar was an open sign of defiance on the side of Samuel. Samuel's been pretty badass this series, so. Uh, open defiance on the side of Samuel, who had shown willingness to compromise with Basil after Sperkios. This would reignite the conflict in the area, ending any remaining chance for a peaceful resolution. Okay, but let me rewind like 10 sec 15 seconds. Tine Emperor Basil II now hoped he would have an easier job in carving up Bulgarian lands. However, not long after Roman's passing, Samuel adopted the title of Tsar. This was enough to enrage Basil, who dispatched Oranus with orders to ruthlessly plunder the Bulgarian countryside. Aware of his diminished strength, Samuel could only ignore the Byzantine incursion. Luckily for the Bulgarian monarch, trouble in the east would once again force Basil II to divert his attention. Again? <sighs> Uh, so, guys, so far, Basil II des definitely hasn't hasn't shown himself as as incompetent by any means, from what I could tell. And uh, pretty much all I know about Basil, everything I know, is just from the episodes I've watched so far here. So, if I'm wrong, there's a good chance I am. Please let me know in the comments, guys. But uh, he has had definitely hasn't made any mistakes and has had to constantly switch attention between his uh, east and western uh, borders with conflicts, and his original assault, where was it? Was it on Nicaea or Abydos? Was pretty impressive. He got the Russian um, or Rus mercenaries, right? And and that was well done. But I I haven't seen much... That would make me believe he's this brilliant commander so far. But he definitely hasn't made any mistakes. From the West. Once again, forced Basil II to divert his attention from the West. In the summer of 998, the Fatimids crushed a Roman army close to Apamea, executing the Byzantine commander of the East, Damien Della Senos, and seriously endangering the empire's eastern frontier. 
By the autumn of 999, Basil crossed the Taurus Mountains with General Oranus in tow. The Emperor made sure to punish the Fatimid-controlled Archia and Homus, storming and ruthlessly sacking both cities. The latter's population was supposedly burned alive by Basil's Varangians while trying to take refuge in a church. But the Roman advance along the Mediterranean coast was once again halted at the city of Tripoli, where Basil's army suffered heavy losses in a sally of the local garrison. Despite the minor setback, the speed and effectiveness of Basil's campaign had convinced the advice hmm? in a sally of the local garrison. Basil's army suffered heavy losses in a sally of the local garrison. Sally? Despite the minor setback, the speed in and a sally? effectiveness of Basil's campaign had convinced the advisors of the young puppet caliph Al-Hakim to seek peace. Around 1000 AD, a truce would finally be negotiated, ultimately leading to 16 years of uninterrupted peace between Byzantium and the Fatimids. The emperor could finally head home. However, his job in the east was not over yet. Important news reached Basil en route while he was wintering in the plains of Tarsus. David III of the Georgian Kingdom of Tau had passed away during the early months of 1000 AD. Ten years ago, Basil had forced the aging king to there adopt him as his son and heir, disrupting David's old agreement with his other adopted son. Ten years ago, Basil had forced the aging king to adopt him as his son and heir, disrupting David's old agreement with his other adopted son, Bagrat III of Abkhazia. Quickly overcoming the grief from the passing of his adoptive father, Basil marched to claim his hefty inheritance. Not long after, but... the Kingdom of Tau was officially absorbed by the Byzantine Empire. Oh. Basil then toured his new province, handing out court titles to local Georgian rulers to ensure their loyalty. In addition, the Emperor support. made sure to show off his army, just in case any of the nobles had any ideas. This seemed to work for the time, and Basil decided to head for Constantinople around mid-1000 AD, leaving the capable Oranus as his new duke. Oh, that went s s more smoothly than I thought it was going to... I, I just had the feeling that there was going to be some sort of fight with the other, other uh, previous promised heir, that, that other guy in the east. Okay. Oranus quickly proved himself a competent governor against King Gurgen of Iberia. Dissatisfied with the minor court title he was given by Basil, Gurgen invaded the Byzantine Empire. However, his attempts were quickly thwarted by Oranus, and the Georgians withdrew. Having returned to Constantinople in late 1000 AD, this so... This is also called Iberia. Does this have any connection to, you know, Spain, Portugal, Iberia, or the the Iberian Peninsula, or is this just coincidence? D. Basil wasted no. Having returned to Constantinople in late 1000 A.D., Basil wasted Anyone no knows. time in preparing for the resumption of conflict with Bulgaria. But much had changed in the Balkans during the emperor's absence. Samuel had successfully invaded Serbia, capturing the ruler of the leading principality. Samuel, Jesus. Respect this Dukia, guy. Dukia, Ivan Vladimir. Ca Sorry. Capturing the ruler of the leading principality of Dukia. A lot of the times when I watch these history videos, I enjoy, I enjoy learning about the main guy, in this case, Basil. But I do love when one of his, one of the rivals are or kind of B characters in the story is also very impressive. And Samuel definitely checks that box for me. Ivan Serbia, capturing the ruler of the leading principality of Dukia, Ivan Vladimir, before pillaging most of the Dalmatian coast. This aggression towards Byzantine allies could not go unpunished. And Guys, I usually sort of root for people when I watch history videos. And it's usually the person that I'm directly learning about. And, and I know it's history. It, you're, you're not supposed to wait for 
spoilers, but I, I watch history in that way. It's, history sort of acts as my TV show, I guess. And so I end up uh, kind of rooting for one, even though I'm, I'm sure the Bulgar Slayer is a good hint that Basil is going to come out on top. But in this case, I, I don't have a favorite. I, I like both of these guys. In 1001, Basil's Byzantine allies could not go unpunished. And in 1001, Basil prepared for a large-scale invasion. He tasked a certain Nikiforos Xiphias with crossing the Balkan mountains and striking into Bulgaria's old heartland to the north. In the meantime, Basil left a small garrison in Philippopolis and marched towards Sredets. Still haunted by memories of the disastrous 989 campaign, the emperor only plundered the city's environs without laying a siege. To the east, Xiphias made good progress, capturing the old Bulgarian. What? what? What does that even mean? Haunted by memories of the disastrous 989 campaign, the emperor only plundered the city's environs without laying a siege. The city's environs? To the east. So just messed up the stuff around the cities instead of instead of directly trying to conquer the city these environs without laying a siege to the east Xiphias made good progress capturing the, the old bulgarian capitals of pliska and preslav before pressing north to ah i'm in frame right i am i i i Freaking just or Bulgaria. Da -da -da. to the east, Xiphias made good progress, capturing the old Bulgarian capitals of Pliska and Preslav before pressing north towards Durostorum. Devastated by the decades of war, much of northern Bulgaria was easy prey at this time. Even the almost impregnable stronghold of Dorostorum fell into Byzantine hands without much resistance. Zephyas then plundered his way through Dobruja, leaving garrisons as he went. Is he By the end come of the year, the Byzantines had reclaimed their ancient province of Moesia. In the wake of this success, Basil and Zephyr spent the winter in Constantinople, making plans for the upcoming campaign in 1002. Once the snow melted, they headed back for the frontier, this time planning to strike at the political heart of the country, Macedonia. Basil's first stop was the fortress of Veria, a stronghold that Samuel reconquered around 996. Again, Basil approached the invasion with tactical and diplomatic wit. He promised hefty rewards and titles to any Bulgarian noble who submitted to Constantinople. The governor of Veria, a man named Dobromir, who was also married to Samuel's niece, did not need much convincing. The town was taken without a siege, and its ruler was rewarded with the title of Pro-Consul. It didn't take long for word of Basil's leniency to spread, and many nobles from Thessaly, Macedonia, and Bulgaria proper to surrender to the Byzantine Emperor, most notably Demeter, the ruler of the fort of Calindria. Yet not everyone was tempted by Basil's promises. Nikolitsa, the governor of Servia, resisted the Byzantines for months. Despite that, the fortress of Servia and its headstrong governor were eventually captured by the Romans. Samuel, what are, you, what are you doing? Choosing mercy over cruelty, Basil gave Nikolitsa the title of patrician, sending the man to a comfortable retirement in Constantinople. But, unfortunately for the emperor, the relentless Bulgarian would escape from the capital and try to retake Servia, only to be captured again. This what? time, the emperor's patience had run out, and Nikolitsa was imprisoned for life. Following this fiasco, the emperor headed for the fortress of Vaden. Located on a high ridge, this stronghold fell- I get a feeling that this time period isn't as barbaric as I would have thought because of the amount of leniency on both sides, it seems, sometimes. Not that there aren't points where it's not the case, but 
the more mercy that is shown in battle in wars times, the more I think there's there's got to be a more sophisticated political connection. Just I don't I, I didn't explain myself well there, but El Varden. Located on a high ridge, this stronghold fell after an intense siege that lasted many months. With these conquests, Basil secured control over southern Macedonia. However, there was still work to be done in the area. The emperor spent the rest of 1002 rebuilding the devastated fortresses of Thessaly before finally returning to winter in Constantinople. Not wasting any time, Basil was already preparing to lay another siege. This time his aim was Vidin, Bulgaria's most important northern city, an impregnable fortress without which control over the Danube River was impossible. By late spring, Basil was already encamped close to Vidin's walls, marking the start of what would become the longest siege of the war. For Samuel, the prospect of his key northern city falling was unnerving. Depleted of troops, the Tsar had stayed passive while Basil kept reducing his strongholds in Macedonia. But now, he had to act. After mustering his diminished army, Samuel marched through Thrace and, by August, reached Adrianople. The Tsar attempted to storm the city while its garrison was distracted by a festival held on the 15th. However, the town's sturdy fortifications halted all of Samuel's attempts. Again, I'm going to bring up uh, instant communication, okay? It's one of the most fascinating changes in how warfare is fought not guns not and it, it's it's the it's the ease of communication that because before when you have you're you're going to have some sort of heads up but imagine being at a festival and thinking everything's fine and just celebrating and then we are being raided by an army outside of our city gates right now just to go from yeah to Crap. It, oh, God. I will never stop talking about this. Instant communication changed everything. Everything from... Uh, so let's go. Tired of failing to conquer the city, the Bal However, the town's sturdy fortifications halted all of Samuel's attempts. Tired of failing to conquer the city, the Bulgarian monarch thoroughly plundered the local countryside, hoping that this would finally trigger a reaction and force Basil to lift the siege and head back for Adrianople. Basil did not take the bait. After an eight-month-long blockade, a local Bulgarian bishop led the Byzantine forces inside Vidin. The city had fallen to Basil, and with it, the entirety of northern Bulgaria. The emperor decided to spend the winter in the town, busying himself with administrative matters. In the meantime, a likely angered Samuel was sluggishly retreating towards Skopje. <laughs> All right, let me go in there. Over here, over here, I'm attacking you. It's like, ah, you can't do that much. I'm going to keep going here. All right, fine, it didn't work. Word of this reached right. Basil, and the emperor moved to intercept the Bulgarians. In early spring, the emperor led his men southwards through Nesus before reaching the Varda River, located just south of Skopje. This is the current capital of, uh, what country? What is it? Um... Basil had the Varda, the emperor moved to inter- What's well, gonna be right there? Um... The uh, North Macedonia, maybe? It's not Serbia, is it? The Bulgarians. 
In early spring, the emperor led his men southwards through Nesus before reaching the Varda River, located just south of Skopje. Basil had once again outmaneuvered Samuel, who had not yet entered the city. Encamped on the southern bank of the Vardar, just to the east of Skopje, the Tsar's men were totally unprepared for what was coming. Though highly unlikely, the few sources we have on the battle mention that the Bulgarian Tsar repeated the same mistake he made at Sperkios, believing the river to be unfordable and failing to keep an eye on Basil. Much like his general Oranos, the emperor managed to cross the river at night and surprise Samuel. Given the Tsar's... Is that uh, the Ardennes is impenetrable moment? military crossed the river at night and surprised Penetrated. Samuel. Given the Tsar's military experience and the considerable depth of the Varda River, this likely isn't what exactly happened. Nevertheless, Basil found a way huh? to catch Samuel and his ragtag army by surprise. The two forces clashed, Basil's men severely outnumbering the Bulgarians. Caught off guard, Samuel exposing himself to a Roman attack on an open field. With that, Basil's victory was guaranteed before the clash had even started. Despite the fierce resistance of the Bulgarians, their casualties quickly mounted, and Samuel was forced to call a retreat. Basil seems to have not engaged in a pursuit, instead choosing to concentrate his efforts on the city of Skopje. Before a proper siege could even begin, however, the city opened its gates to the Romans. Sure they were Samuel's paying defeat at the Battle of Skopje was a minor defeat. Despite this, Basil had ticked off another former Bulgarian capital from his list. Confident after his victory, the emperor headed for Pernik, a Bulgarian fortress located about 50 kilometers southwest of Sredets. Pernik's governor, Krakra, was not tempted by Basil's promises of wealth and titles. After months of intensive siege and many losses caused by Krakra's constant sallying from the fort, the emperor was forced to retreat to Constantinople. What does sallying mean? Just... Hiding? Meanwhile, the absence of Basil allowed Samuel to recapture Skopje soon after. But by 1004, Basil had exhausted Bulgaria, and the decisive battle for the survival of the Tsardom was about to begin. If you stayed around this far, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment as a sacrifice to the algorithm. You can also support us on Patreon and get ad-free early access sacrifice. to our videos for as little as one dollar, or by clicking the thanks button below to leave a one-time tip. As always, we'll see you in the next one. Uh, cool. Good. Great video, guys. Uh, hope you learned something or can teach me something in the comments, more likely. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I am not, I'm not expecting to get some giant uh, understanding and, uh, of Basil through these videos. Uh, but clearly, he has a lot to deal with on both sides of his country, or kind of three sides, because if, if you count Armenia area, Georgia. But it seems like the kind of truce with the... What what caliphate is that again? What is it? Uh, with the caliphate down here. Um, who, who Varangians, while trying to take refuge in Palm Nine back the empire's eastern front, Damien Della Senos in the second, Algerta Dante eight. The Fatimids crushed Fatimid. Um, clearly that allowed that him to have some time, like he was able to stay in Vidin for a while while Samuel couldn't really do much while he's trying to draw him in here. And if he kept having to deal with two fronts, I'm sure he wouldn't have had that luxury. So clearly that helped a lot. Um, the figurehead. Uh, was it the puppet younger king of the caliphate?
really interesting. Would appreciate any comments below, guys. Hope you're all doing well, and hopefully I'll see you guys next video. Bye.